started with our first presenter, uh, which is from paper to interactive web-based asset management, City of Nina Water Utility, a case study. Uh, Scott Daniel from Grafe is presenting. Scott specializes in web-based GIS application development and is experienced in a variety of GIS platforms and programming languages. He focuses on creating custom and user-friendly interactive web-based GIS applications that provide access to detailed spatial data for a variety of users. He enjoys photography, science fiction, traveling, and the occasional home brew. Take it away, Scott. Thank you, David. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you for coming to this. I'm going to jump right into the presentation here and share my screen. Okay. So as David mentioned, uh, this is what we're here for, paper to interactive web-based asset management. So I'm going to give you a brief history of Nina, uh, Nina Waterworks. Um, at, well, essentially, this is our agenda. These, we're going to cover these points. Uh, a little bit about Nina Waterworks, how they um, evolved through their record keeping and asset management, what they've done with mapping, and then where they are today with Infinite GIS. So the water utility was established back in 1893. Uh, and they built a, when they built a groundwater plant. And like many in Wisconsin, the water had an extremely high calcium hardness level of 1,000 parts per million. Uh, so it's like drinking a glass of lime water or something. Um, after more than 40 years of this, they decided to build a lime softening plant that was completed in 1936. And lately, their newest plant uh, has some pretty interesting things. A lot of stuff I honestly don't understand a whole lot about. But in 2007, this was completed. They have a powdered activated carbon, uh, pre-treatment basins, lime softening, dual media filters, granulated activated carbon, and ultraviolet disinfection, and contactor basins. So a lot of high-tech stuff. Nina Waterworks consists, uh, or they serve about uh, 25,500 uh, in population. There's 140 miles of water main that varies from four inch to 20 inch, it's about 1,200 hydrants and approximately 2,000 mainline valves and over 11,000 water meters. So in before 2002, uh, the the city, the water utility, managed everything with paper records, which is probably very similar to a lot of municipalities in the United States. Everything they had uh, was on paper, paper files, maps, plans, uh, and all in file cabinets. Some of those things were kind of scattered all over the place, and they used water meter cards like a lot of people do, um, as you can see a picture there of, of one of those things water meter cards, uh, intersection sheets, lateral sheets, all those were created and saved in a, in a three ring binder uh, or stored in a three ring binder like, like this one here. And, and they made lots of those. They made, made multiple copies of this. So each truck, each guy in the field would have a, a binder of, of an intersection sheet or their lateral sheet showing where things are. Of course, file cabinets full of records, rooms full of boxes and boxes of records, um, intersection sheets like you see here were manually uh, drawn by hand and oftentimes they wouldn't update those until the end of the, the year after maybe the construction season was over and they had time, they would redraw these from scratch and then make copies and update the ring binders so that every everyone who had one had an updated map. In uh, 2002, early, uh, they they got Cartograph Navigator, 
and Navigator uh, was the first kind of thing they went to with a computerized system, um, converting everything from paper to now a database type of thing. And they, their, their distribution manager at the time kind of took the bull by the horns and started putting things into the system. Uh, but unfortunately, they, they lost a lot of the history of the records that they had. And so people were still referring to the intersection sheets, lateral sheets, and meter changeout cards until they had a full cycle of getting everything into the system. And you can see lots of different forms and screens from Cartograph that they that they could uh, that they had in Cartograph. So some of the pros with Cartograph, they they started from scratch, so that was kind of good. Uh, they went from paper uh, to a computerized system, at least initially. Um, Cartograph is very data-driven and very customizable, which was good and bad, especially the customization piece. Um, and it allowed users to customize certain fields in order to fulfill a unique requirement of what they needed to report on their annual reports for PSC. Um, so basic reporting was quite easy to do. On the flip side of that, it wasn't user friendly and it required a lot of training to get started. And because of licensing, access was only limited to local PCs and they only had two licenses. So the distribution manager had access and their foreman had access. And again, it required a large amount of training to get it set up and started and a lot of time uh, spent on training. There wasn't any GIS integration with this particular asset management system with Cartograph Navigator. Um, and in fact, they didn't really know what GIS was back then. And it wasn't something they, they even tried to tackle at that time. So again, as far as mapping goes, everything was done on paper. Um, any any uh, work orders or, or like meter cards, they still did everything on paper. And so essentially when a, when a person had to go out on the field to do a water meter change, they would bring a stack of paper records out with them uh, and then fill them in by hand uh, and bring that back to the office. And then that would be entered back into the database after they were done with their work for the day. Um, reports were difficult to customize and again, limited access um, and costly to have more multiple licenses. So it was limited in that way for them. And so here's an example of a water meter change. The, the biggest issue they had uh, was, again, printing out all the field, field orders, uh, printed out on half sheets, like you can see here. So they printed this out, and then somebody hand wrote uh, information on the card. And you can see how that gets, some of it could be kind of illegible, depending upon who it was, and uh, and weather was kind of an issue. but that that record translated into a, a digital record in the database for Cartograph. So they used, uh, again, they had Cartograph tracking all this information. They used Cartograph to print out these half sheets, take those out in the field, record the information, bring them back into the office, record the changes back into Cartograph. So it was from computer to paper to computer. Um, and that all took time and sometimes it, it wasn't kept up to date uh, very regularly. So in 2016, they started with a simple wall map uh, where they, they went and got uh, all of their facilities located and uh, then graphically they could see on the map where uh, their water utilities were, but it was still a cumbersome updating process. And they, they had a, an outside firm do that uh, that map update information. Um, and just like before, they would wait till the end of the construction season to do those updates. So things were kind of out of date as they went along um, and could only do that when they had time. From 2016 through 2019, they got into ArcGIS Online, uh, which was great for them. That gave the crews access to GIS in the field. So they 
purchased a few tablets for the technicians to use. However, it was still somewhat limited. Um, it was really only the current information. And it's really what got the utility to start looking at their at their workflows and, and analyze uh, how they were doing things and what they could do better. On, on the downside of ArcGIS Online, the, only the latest data could be stored in the system. So there were no historical records. Um, they all, all still was duplicate data entry using Cartograph alongside of ArcGIS Online. So if they had changes to um, when a valve was turned, um, that would go into the into ArcGIS Online, and then it would also go into Cartograph and enter that there, so that they had a, a record of that information in Cartograph. And without the enterprise license, editing and map, mapping changes were difficult. So here's a, a kind of a snapshot of their wall map and of the, the city of Nina and their water utility. Um, might be a little hard to see, but the water mains are colored by size. Uh, so they could see where the larger mains were versus the smaller mains. Um, again, uh, still had no issue, no, no way of storing historical data. And real time information was was not really available. Um, again, an inefficient workflow because they were duplicating efforts even more with with two systems. Oh, yeah. So some of the challenges um, we've already mentioned uh, lots of paper. In fact, they were probably creating more paper <laughs> because they were printing stuff from the database from Cartograph using that in the field marking it up, bringing it back in the office, and dealing with uh, handwriting issues, people who couldn't uh, print properly or weather. Um, if it were raining out, that would be a problem. If it was too windy, they ended up losing some records at times because the paper would get caught up in the wind, would blow out a window of the truck or something. Um, and then they still had issues with not everybody had access to this. Uh, so still, uh, lots of duplicate data entry, um, and then gathering data. Uh, as in Wisconsin, we have a public service commission that water utilities have to report to. So getting the information they needed out of Cartograph and or ArcGIS was was a bit of a challenge. Um, so I, and it usually took the manager a couple of weeks to to poke and prod the software to get enough information out of their system to to do that annual report. So the solution, um, GIS with asset management, Infinite GIS. Uh, Infinite GIS is a product that, uh, that Grafe provides. Um, it is based on ArcGIS server uh, as a platform and ArcGIS Enterprise. Um, gives access to the GIS to all staff. There's no limit to the number of users they can have. Um, it is a one-stop shop for all of their data. Uh, both mapping and tabular, um, historical and current. Um, base map layers are always up to date because the uh, being a, an ArcGIS uh, platform, um, we're bringing in uh, parcels from the city that they maintain and other county map services such as orthophotography and topography um, served up by Winnebago County. Uh, so that's all brought in live. Um, when uh, when field crews perform inspections, they do those in the field using a tablet, and they record that information in the field as it's happening. So it's an instantaneous update for all to see because it's all server-based uh, data. Uh, so even the manager who's back in the office can see uh, right away when something was done. Um, also are managing inventory. Uh, so if, if they're replacing a valve, they use a valve out of inventory, which provides them cost of inventory and uh, they can record labor and equipment, man equipment as well um, that's being used in repairs and things like that. So work orders is all part of that and, um, and they can then track all the expenses when it comes to doing a repair. 
So I've got a few screenshots here. And if we have time, I might be able to go into some live uh, showing of this if we have time or maybe later when you get back, uh, if you've got time later, visit us at the booth and I can demonstrate some things. Uh, we're in room B for the exhibitor hall. So uh, Nina has a, a basically a, a custom web interface uh, that gets them access to their to their GIS data. Uh, menus for accessing uh, different reports and things. Um, this is a, a drop down menu. We're going to jump to the valve tool and you can see that they can then filter uh, all of the valve data with these with these filters on top and display um, just what they need. Put in exercise date ranges, which defaults to uh, the current current year. Uh, so they can quickly uh, gather up the information they need for their PSC report. The inspections tab will show all the inspections that were done on this on the valves. And clicking on the details, you'll see the the inspection that was performed. Again, showing drop down lists of of data that was in the filters. These are repairs needed, so they can see. Choose maybe they've got a a a crew that's ready to go out and um, fix a certain thing, do it, do maybe clean outs on valves. They can find out where, what all those valves are and just, and just get a listing of those valves. And then the repair activity. Um, you can see the costs that were, that it took to, to repair this broken uh, box, valve box. Clicking on the details for for that will show you the more of the details of that repair. Again, showing who worked on it, what their hours and their rate was. And by the way, rate is something that only the managers see. Um, so you don't have guys uh, complaining about, well, how come Larry's making thirty dollars an hour and I'm only making twenty three dollars an hour. Um, so these this information is hidden uh, from from the, the field crew. So uh, tier level access to, to information as well within Infinite GIS. So here's a look at uh, a closer look at zooming in on the on the system. You can see the interface. We're, we're using Geocortex as a as a platform. So there's base maps and you can expand out the layer list and, and do searches. Um, or show on the, the water system with water meters. And uh, something that's a, a bit unique here, uh, zooming in on, on this area, have a, a basically a custom symbol, a dynamic symbol of a, a valve that opens uh, or closes left-handed. It's an opposite of what, what's typical. Generally, you close a valve, you turn it clockwise. Um, in this case, this valve is a, is a counterclockwise valve for, for closing. And that's just managed by uh, the form that has all the attributes for this valve. So the close direction is left hand. And that symbol um, uh, shows you that in, in the map. So you can see that. We can look at the inspection history of the valve. So we took all of the cartograph data and imported that in uh, to Infinite GIS so they have access to all of the historical records for all of the valve turning and, and inspections that were done in the past. Here's another, another look at the map. Uh, when it comes to doing inspections, whenever there's an issue indicated in that inspection, a repair is a repair record is created, a related record is created. And those are shown by these dots. You can see that the repair records are shown. And this is um, really what what the, the advantages of a relational database are. And I, I use SQL a lot. So you'll see a lot of related records being displayed in the map uh, just by using ge the geometry of the feature class. Uh, related to the, uh, in this case, a repair record. Um, actually, I'm, I guess I don't want to get too crazy here, but I'll, I'll 
a little plug for tomorrow. I'm doing another presentation on some of these things as far as using SQL and and the things you can do in that and uh, make use of that stuff in in GIS in a in, a, in an application. So. Um, Here's another another example. Zooming in and clicking on a valve, uh, you can see that uh, the pop-up shows this. There's actually four records here: the valve, the repair needed, and the pipes that are there too. Um, you can see that by clicking on it and uh, open up that valve uh, record and show all the all the information about that repair that uh, that was done. Another example, looking at meters, uh, their water meter management system. Um, right away, I'll show the meter exchanges that uh, are all the exchanges. By default, it shows a, a week at a time. This is showing two, but uh, the the billing manager will able will use this to go in and see all of the changes that were made and use their billing system to to record those changes. Uh, and so they use Infinite GIS as well to, to get that information. So we've got under the water meter inventory tab, there's uh, meters that are in stock, meters installed, meters that are in for repair, and those that are retired. And this is just a couple of those pages. You can see when you when you have an installed meter, there's you can look at the history and see what other meters were installed at this property and or the the flow test history of this of this water meter. Actually, it's it's the the places where this meter has been before. So the whole uh, history of a water meter through its life cycle is tracked uh, through Infinite GIS for them. You see where a meter has been installed, uh, where it currently is installed, where it was installed in the past. And then looking at the asset management form for the water meter location, you've got a water meter installation and then a register. This is the, the radio essentially that is uh, sending the signals uh, back and forth when you do meter readings. Information about uh, how often this meter needs to be exchanged or tested or the, the battery life and the information about the property that's installed on. Looking at the history tab, you can see the history of this meter um, going at it right from this form. Uh, let's see. Next, looking at uh, an overall of the map here, you can see the, there's a, a tool for mapping water pipe breaks as well. These breaks are related to the pipe. Uh, so the pipe actually does, you can change the color of the pipe based on the number of breaks. Um, we're zooming in here, looking at more detail on meters. And again, just zooming in, I can click on a water meter and click on the details of that meter and open up the form. So this is the same, same form either getting at it from the tabular view, the, the asset management pages we were looking at, or in the map um, by zooming in and clicking on a meter, getting the same information that you had from the other, the other way. Um, and here's a nice dynamic layer showing water meters uh, till year, uh, till they need to be exchanged. So the red ones are those that need to be exchanged in the current year. And as the year changes, this the color of this point changes because it's all dynamically done uh, in the database on a on a formula. Here's another look at um, private wells. We've got uh, private wells shown in different uh, uh, statuses, I guess, abandoned permits or not clicking on one, opening up the details of that, of that uh, private well form.
Uh, and next, uh, again, we just saw private wells in the map. We can get a report of all the private wells as well outside of the map. So two ways to get at the information, either interactively in the map or, or from outside the map uh, through tabular uh, forms. So there's a, a few things that uh, we're looking forward to doing soon for them, um, doing some direct linking with the billing software, leak detection monitoring, fire flow management, um, and, and some other things, uh, which I won't bother reading all of them. Um, so that is just the water utility. Uh, hopefully we'll be getting into the public works department stuff uh, before too long as well. And so I'm almost out of time here. That's all I have. I will uh, minimize this again. If you want to stop by our booth, I can get into more depth with this. And uh, I'd encourage you to, if you're if you're using SQL Server, um, uh, I've got some some tips and tricks and things that I've done in SQL that that you can apply uh, as well uh, to your systems. Uh, so. Stop my sharing, and if there's any questions, is there a QC before in the field in field data updates the default main data? How do you control that? Oh, that was to everybody and to me. <laughs> so, <clears throat> um, I guess I'm not exactly sure what you mean. The the forms uh, have a lot of the drop-down lists require specific data entry. So you can't, uh, kind of the issues they had in the past when everything was on paper or somebody was, was entering things in the computer, there were typos and uh, different ways of typing in a street name uh, that would be wrong. Now it's a drop-down list, so they can't really type. There's not a whole lot of areas in these forms where they're typing data uh, in. So a lot of things are drop down lists or check boxes and things like that. Um, are they changing live data? Yes, they are changing data live. Uh, and as far as, especially when it comes to uh, doing a, a valve inspection or a hydrant flushing, they're recording that event uh, as it happens. Um, and that that's creating a related record to that hydrant or that or that valve. Um, they're not doing a, as much actual editing of attributes in the field, but they can. If they end up on a on a valve or something, uh, and they notice something that's incorrect or missing in the form, they can uh, edit those attributes right away uh, in the in the field. And so it, it's updating that SQL data uh, feature table right away. Um, they can also, uh, if they have the proper rights, they can move features around as well. In fact, they do use a, a GPS unit through Bluetooth connection to their tablets to get an accurate location, uh, and they can use that location in the map to accurately locate where things are. I'm right at 129. Uh, looks like we're going to have somebody up next, so I'm going to hand it back to Dave. Thank you, everyone.